Hello and welcome to our second lecture on MIS. Once again, my name is Ibrahim Osman Adam, and today we're going to be looking at uh, global e-business and collaboration. Uh, in this lecture, we'll be interested in understanding what business processes are and how business processes are related to information systems. So we'll try to see how information systems can be employed to improve or change uh, business processes. We we'll also look at how systems serve the different management groups in an organization. How do systems link the enterprise improve the enterprise to improve organizational performance? So uh, we would uh, look at the hierarchy in the organization, the top level management, the middle level management, and the operational level staff, and how information systems serve all these different uh, management levels in the organization. We also try to understand what we mean by collaboration and why systems for collaboration and social business are very important in businesses today. And we also look at the different types of collaborative technologies one may use in an organization. Uh, we also try to understand the role of information the, the role of the information systems function in a business. This is related to some of the things we have discussed in, in lecture one. Yes. To start off this lecture, one critical thing we need to understand is to understand what we mean by a business process. Business processes are at the heart of every uh, business. In order to operate, businesses must deal with many different pieces of information about suppliers, customers, employees, invoices, payments, and of course, their products and services. So basically, based on this basic understanding, we want to say that a business process consists of the flow of materials, the flow of information, and the flow of knowledge. And a business process, uh, business processes can be described as logically related set of tasks that define how specific business tasks are performed. And business uh, processes may be tied to functional areas or it may be cross-functional. When we say it may be tied to functional area, we are basically look, looking at business processes that may, for instance, uh, involve only sales or uh, manufacturing, or finance, or uh, marketing. It may also be cross-functional, and it may cut across different uh, functions in or different departments in, in our organizations, in our organization. So when we bring a lot of business processes in different functional areas, which are either tied to one particular functional area or cross-functional, then we can have what we refer to as a business. So we can basically say that a business can be seen as a collection of different, different business processes. Now, business processes may be assets or liabilities. And basically, what we mean is that when business processes lead to the creation of value, then we can refer to them as being assets. Alternatively, business processes can be liabilities if they are based on inefficient ways of working that impede organizational responsiveness and what? And efficiency. In that case, they can be, liability, they can be referred to as uh, liabilities. Now, let's look at the different business process that may exist in our organization, looking at the different functional areas that may exist. So the different functional areas that may exist are manufacturing, sales and marketing, finance, accounting, uh, human resource. Under manufacturing, a typical business process may be the assembling of a product. Under sales and marketing, a typical business process may be the identification of customers. A particular customer uh, niche may need to be identified and the processes will follow to identify those customers would be a business process. Then the creation of financial statement, the preparation of financial statement is also a business process. Similarly, the hiring of employees as part of the human resource function is also an example of... Uh, now, based on our understanding of what business processes are, one may ask, how can information technology improve business processes? And I, I, I want you to be cautious about my use of information technology and information system. Here, we are basically interested in the hardware, the software, and probably data, and how these uh, hard parts can be used to improve business processes. And we can relate it to some of the things we looked at yesterday. Why would businesses invest heavily in information systems? It's related to this. Now, to understand how information technology can improve business processes, we need to, we need to look at it from two perspectives. 
Information technology can have an incremental impact on business processes, such that it will just change the steps that were used to carry out a particular process. It can improve on it, so that if some of the steps were, if all the steps were manual, in, uh, investing in information technology can uh, virtualize some of these processes by putting it online. Another example would be that information technology can improve business process by completely transforming the business process, completely changing the process. It is not only an incremental improvement, but the overall process is completely. We can say that information technology can improve businesses in two in two ways: an incremental impact where we are interested in increasing efficiency of existing processes by automating the steps that were traditionally manual. Or we can enable an entirely new process by changing the flow of information, replacing all sequential steps with parallel steps, or eliminating delays in decision making and supporting different new business models with the new technology we are bringing. Now, when information systems are introduced in an organization, they serve different organizations. Okay, to be able to understand the different management groups in the organization, it is imperative that I use this basic diagram to explain. If we consider this as an organization, the three hierarchical levels would be the strategic level, the management level, and then the operational level. So consider, considering these three different constituencies, Information systems, the information system needs of each of these constituencies will be will be different. For instance, if you look at the those at the, the very bottom, those at the rank and file, those who carry out the day-to-day -day activities of the organization, uh, the operations, the management information system that will serve their needs will be different from those at the middle level management who make short to medium term decisions. It will also be different from those at the strategic level who make very long-term decisions. So we're going to look at the different uh, categories of information system that will serve the individual or different uh, hierarchical needs of the organization. Okay, so the first one we'll look at is, uh, the first one to look at is transaction processing systems. And transaction processing systems serve the operational uh, managers and staff of the organization. And these staff usually perform a record daily and routine transaction necessary to conduct business. Example, sales, uh, the processing of sales orders, the uh, processing of pay, uh, payroll, shipping uh, issues and all that. They also allow managers to monitor status of operations and relations with external environment. So usually the data that is collected by those who work with the transaction processing systems are provided to those at the middle level management to make short to medium term decisions. We refer to the information system that serves, that serves the needs of this particular category of people as the transaction processing system. The next category of uh, uh, information system we're going to look at is uh, the management information system. But before we do that, I would like us to first of all understand what we mean by business intelligence. Here we are emphasizing the relationship between a particular class of software called business intelligence, business intelligence software, and they support decision uh, support systems used by middle and senior management level. So, in order to understand that better, the systems for business intelligence are uh, usually data and software tools which are used for organizing and analyzing data. They are also used to help uh, managers and users to make improved uh, decisions. So the next category of uh, information systems are management information systems, decision support systems, and executive support systems. In the next slide, we are going to take our time to look at what we mean by management information system, decision support system, as well as the executive support systems. The management information systems typically serve middle uh, level management. And the uh, information that is generated by uh, operational level staff by using the transaction processing system are submitted to the, the middle level management and they, they rely on the management information system to be able to make short to medium term decisions. So we, uh, the management information system provides reports on firm's current performance based on what data was provided by the 
transaction processing system. The minimum information system also provides answers to routine questions with predefined procedure for answering them. Typically, it has very little analytical capability. Now, this is a, some, a, 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 a typical example of what an MIS, a management information system report is. So if you look at this consolidated consumer products corporation sales by product and sales region, you realize that product numbers are indicated, the product description is indicated, the sales region is indicated, and the actual sales per each region is indicated. The planned uh, sales are indicated, and the actual versus planned percentages are also calculated. So this gives us a snapshot of what uh, the consumer products corporation sales looks like in particular regions for the year 2019. The next is to look at decision support systems. And decision support systems also serve middle level management. And they also support now routine decision making. A typical example would be the impact, a, a, a system that will look at the impact on production schedule. If a particular uh, month's sales is going to be doubled, what would the impact look like? And decision support systems will also rely on external information provided by TPS as well as the MIS. Though the decision support system serves middle level management, it relies on data or information provided by the transaction processing system as well as the management information system. And we usually see that it is model driven. It's usually fitted. Decision support systems are usually fitted or pre programmed with particular models so that if you enter particular data into it, it will give you some decisions, some output, and this output will support you in making a particular informed business decision. The last one we'll look at will be the executive support system. The executive support system support senior level management, and the senior level management are usually engaged in the making of very strategic business decisions. So they, they, their decisions usually are long-term in nature, usually long-term in nature, and they deal with the vision, the mission of the organization and whatnot. It's also now routine. They, they, they also deal with now routine uh, decisions, which, which usually require some level of judgment, some level of evaluation, and some level of insight, which may all come from the experience of the executive. They also incorporate data about external events. So before the executive will make a decision by relying on the executive support system, you will also need to rely on external events, which will inform his decision to be uh, effective. Next in the slide for us to look at is what we refer to as enterprise applications. But before we do that, I want us to take our minds a little bit back to consider the different functional areas in an organization. And if you look at the different functional areas in an organization, we are basically looking at the different departments and what they do. So we may have the sales function, we have the production function, the accounting function, the finance, payroll, marketing. All these are different functional areas. So we can have information systems that we can classify by looking at what the information system does. In that case, we are classifying information system based on what? Functionality. We can also classify information system based on the level of the level in the organization it supports. So that if the information system supports lower level staff, operational level staff, then we refer to it as a transaction processing system. If it serves the needs of the middle level management, then it may either be a management information system or a decision support system. And if it supports very senior level management, then we we'll refer to it as an executive support system. Now, I want us to emphasize that though we may have uh, different information systems that serve different organizational needs, we may also come across what we refer to as enterprise applications. And enterprise applications are systems that link the entire enterprise together. And this linkage will span all the functional areas of the organization. And they are used to execute business processes across the different departments, across the different functional areas in the organization. So an organization may have a, a system that will not only serve one particular level of the organization, but it will include all levels of management. There are four major enterprise applications. The first is what we refer to as enterprise systems. The second is supply chain management systems. The third, customer, money, customer relationship management system, and the last, knowledge management systems. We will now take each of these four uh, major enterprise applications and look, and look at it one after the So first, first we look at the enterprise system. What is an enterprise system? Some of us may have heard of this term. Enterprise systems are also called uh, enterprise resource planning systems. 
Some of us may have heard of the term ERP. Basically, this is what it refers to, Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. And Enterprise Systems basically integrate data from key business processes. And it does this by bringing everything into one single system, one big system that serves all the functional areas in the, in the organization. It also helps in speeding communication of information throughout the firm instead of limiting it to one particular department. It also enables greater, it ensures that there is greater flexibility in responding to customer requests, customer needs, and ensuring that there is greater accuracy in order, when people make orders, there is greater fulfillment in the, in the orders. It also helps managers to be uh, managers to be able to assemble overall view to have an overall view of what operations in the organization. We refer to a system that does this as an enterprise system. The next enterprise application we want to look at is the supply chain management system. And the supply chain management system basically manages the relationship with suppliers, the relationship with vendors purchasing firms, distributors, and other logistic companies that the organization may be dealing with. To do this, the supply chain management system manages shared information about orders, production, inventory levels, and whatnot with all the different stakeholders I mentioned earlier. The main goal of the supply chain management system is to move correct amount of production from the source to the point of consumption as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible, and at the lowest cost. The supply chain management system is a type of inter-organizational system. We refer to it as an inter-organizational system because the other stakeholders like purchasing firms, suppliers, distributors are not part of our organization or they are not part of the organization. And to deal with that organization, our system will have to find a way to link with them. In a, to link with them in a way. That is why we refer to it as an inter-organizational system. And, and it ensures that there's automation, or it automates the flow of information across different organizational boundaries. The next type of enterprise application is a customer relationship management system. And the customer relationship management system helps organizations to be able to manage its relationship with work with its customers. To do this, it will coordinate the different business processes in the organization that deal with customers in terms of sales, in terms of marketing, in terms of what? Customer, customer service. And the goals of a customer relationship management system basically is to optimize revenue, to ensure that revenue goes up. It also helps to improve customer satisfaction, increase uh, customer retention, identify and retain most profitable customers, and overall helps in increasing what? increasing sales and last but not the least is the knowledge management system and the knowledge management system basically manages the processes for capturing and applying knowledge throughout the organization there may be different expertise in the organization and the knowledge management system helps to be able to what capture and apply the the knowledge it also collects relevant knowledge and make it available wherever it is needed in the enterprise to improve business processes as well as help in making effective management decisions it also helps in linking the firm with external sources of knowledge that can help the organization to make informed decisions. Uh, enterprise systems are usually very difficult to, expense, to, 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 to implement. They are extremely expensive as well as very difficult to implement. So an organization may rely on typical technologies like intranets and extranets. An intranet basically it's a platform, a technology platform that increases integration and expedites the flow of information within an organization. It does that within an organization. It ensures that there's internal network based on internal standard. Often, usually, it is private based and the, the access area is private within the organization. It may exist only, it may exist on the organization's website. So though people may be able to have access to an organization's website, they may not be able to have access to some particular resources that are reserved for only people who are uh, in, who, who are employees of the organization. There's also what we call an extranet. And they, an extranet can be referred to basically as a company uh, website, which is accessible to the people in the organization, but open to only authorized vendors and suppliers who are outside the organization. Majority of the time, organization may use extranet because they want to facilitate collaboration with this uh, vendors and suppliers now intranet extranet 
enterprise application systems and whatnot, all the systems we have been looking at, all help in other forms of uh, 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 internet technology. A typical example of some uh, internet-based technology are e-business, e-commerce, and e-government. We will take some time to try and explain the meaning of these three terms. We would later on have full-blown lectures on what we mean by e-business and e-commerce, as well as digital goods. E-business basically refers to the use of technology and internet to drive major business processes. A major business process can be sales, a major business process can be production, and if we employ technology to be able to do this, we refer to it as e-business. So e-business cuts across all the different functional areas in an organization. E-commerce, on the other hand, is just a subset of e-business, and it involves the buying and selling of goods and services using the internet by relying on the internet. We also have what we refer to as e-government, and e-government basically refers to using internet technology to deliver information and services to the citizenry, citizens, employees, and other businesses. Okay. Now, to provide some understanding of what uh, the interaction between businesses, uh, consumers, or citizens, and the government, I would want us to take a, a, a little break. I, I want to draw a table, basic table. So I'll refer to this as business, this as consumer, another business, another consumer. And if I draw some line, like I'm even add government. So let's add government and then uh, government here. Now, if I do a little bit of permutation by matching business and business, I can have what we refer to as business to business. I can have business to consumer. I can have business to government. I can have consumer to business. I can have consumer to consumer. I can have consumer to government. I can have government to business. Government to consumer and government to government. Basically what this refers to, the, the, this Three are actors in the actors in e-commerce. In act, uh, with e-commerce, we can basically say that the actors are the business and the consumer. But if we are involving the government in the context of uh, e-government, we will have another actor, which is the government and citizen. So, using this basic understanding, one can say that we can have a type of e-commerce which we will refer to as B two B, business to business. Uh, e-commerce. In this instance, we are basically saying that businesses will deal with other businesses using an electronic medium. Businesses can also deal with other businesses using uh, other consumers using electronic medium and so on. We will later on look at e-commerce as a topic in later uh, lectures. So let me skip this for now. Now, the, the next part of our lectures would be to deal with what we refer to as collaboration. When we say collaboration, what do we mean? When we say collaboration, what do we mean? <laughs> collaboration basically refers to two or more people working together. When two or more people work together to achieve an objective, we can basically say that they are collaborating. And collaboration can either be short term, one, two days, 30 minutes, or it can be long term. Sometimes it can span over years. It can also be internal within an organization or it can be external the organization and others outside the organization. It can also be formal or informal. There are different ways we can use to classify uh, the types of what? Collaboration. Col collaboration has become very necessary because of what? The changing nature of work. People now need to work from home. Uh, look at the, the, the instance of the pandemic. People have to work from home. And in, by working from home, you still have to work with your colleagues who are also living in different parts of the world or in different parts of the country. So the changing nature of work has necessitated the fact that we should be able to use collaborative technology to be able to, to work. These are some of the reasons. There's also the emphasis, the, 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 the emphasis on innovation. New ways of doing things are coming up. And collaborating, to make collaboration much more effective, we need to rely on some of these new ways of what of uh, collaborating. There is also the growth of professional work. There are some particular type of work 
which we refer to as interaction jobs. People will have to interact with others to be able to deliver or to be able to, to win. A typical example of an interaction job would be a lecturing job. I will have to find a way. Look at the way I am currently lecturing. If not because of the corona, we would have been sitting together face to face. And if we were sitting together face to face for a lecture, it would have been one way we are collaborating. We are still collaborating by relying on technology to be able to deliver this lecture. Because this is an example of a professional work, in quotes, and in some sort of an interaction job, we have to find the technology to be able to help us to, to, to collaborate. The changing organization, the changing nature of the organization is also one reason why people are collaborating, people are forced to collaborate, the changing scope of the organization. Some organizations work within specific geographical regions. If they need to expand, they may need to rely on some form of technology to be able to expand in other areas, collaborate with others in other sectors. There is also a concept of what we refer to as social business. And social business basically refers to the use of social networking platforms, such as social, uh, Facebook, Instagram, to engage employees and customers and suppliers. When we employ these social network platforms to do business, we'll basically refer to it as social business. And the main aim of social business is to deepen interactions and expedite information flow between different actors in a transaction. Okay. Why do businesses collaborate? What are the benefits? What are the benefits of collaboration? Investment in collaboration in collaborative technology can bring a large amount of rewards to the organization. It can increase sales, it can increase marketing, marketing outreach, research and development, and many, many other areas. One other uh, benefit, business benefit is productivity. Sharing, it makes it easy for people to be able to share knowledge and resolve problems that arise as a result of what? Working. Also, quality. Faster resolution of quality issues. When people call to complain about, uh, say, network issues regarding a particular teleco, it is through collaborative technology that we are able to do this. And it makes the resolution of quality issues faster. Then there's also the issue of innovation. More ideas for products and services than customer service. All these are important reasons why businesses would want to engage in collaborative technologies. Now, how can we make collaboration effective? The requirements for collaboration. And the requirements for collaboration are key. In order to ensure that there is collaborative quality, there is the need for the organization to have collaboration capability. The capability is basically the ability to do one thing or the other. So if an organization has a collaborative quality, and collaborative quality can be achieved through the open culture in an organization. Or if there's open culture, people can deal with each other in an open way. And there's a decentralized structure. There's no power is not concentrated in one person. And there's also breadth of collaboration. People who work at different levels will be able to uh, easily communicate with each other. Apart from collaborative capability, one criti other critical component to ensure collaboration quality is uh, apart from collaboration capability, one other critical component that we need to we need to ensure collaboration quality is collaboration technology. And the collaboration technologies are many. There are different forms. There are there's email, there are social networking side and whatnot. We'll look at some of them uh, uh, in a bit. So if we have collaboration quality coupled with collaborative technology, we will have collaboration. If we have collaborative capability. Coupled with collaboration technology, we will have what we refer to as collaboration quality. And if there is collaborative quality, it will ensure organizational performance. It will lead to the increase in organizational performance. Now, to ensure that we have collaborative culture in an organization, we have to juxtapose two things. There's really what we refer to as command and control in organization, where no value is placed on teamwork one person is in charge of everything and nobody can complain no participatory management if we have something like this collaboration will be difficult in that case there's no open collaborative culture and that will that would make the achievement of collaboration very difficult in the organization so then there's also the issue of collaborative business culture the senior management and organization should be able to rely on team members 
or the team of employees, policies, product design, process and system, the organization should all rely on teams instead of concentrating everything on uh, one person. Now, how do we ensure that we are able to collaborate effectively? To be able to collaborate effectively, we need collaborative tools. So we'll look at some examples of collaborative tools. And some example, some example of collaborative technologies are email. Yeah, to be able to send a message to somebody these days, you don't need to send it by paper. You can send an email, instant messaging, messaging apps like WhatsApp, Google Messenger, and whatnot. These are all collaborative tools. We also have what we call wikis. And wikis are basically websites, editable websites. People can go there and edit their website. A typical example is uh, Wikipedia. All the information that is contained on Wikipedia are editable. People go there with an account and they are able to edit it. They verify and they make it available to people online. Then we also have virtual worlds. People can use virtual worlds in, in, in engaging in games, engaging in other uh, video conferencing and whatnot. Collaboration and social business platforms such as virtual meeting team, virtual meeting systems, cloud collaborative services such as Google Drive, Google Documents, all these are examples of collaborative technology that one can use to ensure that a business reaps, reaps the benefits of what? Collaboration. To explain collaboration much more better, I want us to use this matrix. We refer to it as the time, space, collaboration and social tool matrix. So what happens is that we have to look at it in the context of uh, we have to look at it in the context of place and time. So we have place here, and then we have time at the top. We have time at the top. So if people are communicating at the same place and at the same time, usually face to through face to face, we say it is synchronous. Everything is happening at the same time. Everything the same place is co-located, same time, synchronous face-to-face -face interactions and another form another form would be the same place but different time in that case we call it asynchronous it is asynchronous we can also have what we call different place and then same time it can we can also have different place same time collaboration then we can also have different place and then a different time collaboration and examples of all these collaborative tools are provided in the boxes indicator. So, for example, if we are looking at face-to-face -face interactions, the typical example are decision rooms, single display group, group where shared table, wall displays, and room where. So we can just sit together in a room, and that will be synchronous, the same time, at the same time, and at the same place. We can also have team rooms, but the team rooms are at different places virtually. So somebody can be in America and we can also be in Ghana. So it will be a different time, but it will it will happen online at the same place, but different time. Then we have a different place, which is remote and the same time. Different place in the same time. So somebody can be in Accra and we can communicate with the, with the person. It will be the same time, but the place will be different. Accra and Tamale, for instance. Then we can also have the di different place, but different time. For instance, if I send you an email, if I send you an email, whilst I'm in Tamale, you can be in Y, you can access the email. That would be a typical example of what? Different place and then different type. And that will also be what? Asynchronous. That brings us to the end of the second lecture. So in this lecture, what we have basically tried to do is to try to understand, let me go back a bit. What we have basically tried to do is to try and understand what we mean by a business process. After that, we tried to understand how they are related to information systems. And we indicate that business processes are different steps, sequential steps that are used to carry out a particular activity and we indicated that how are they related to information system they are related to information system in such a way that though different processes can come together collectively to be referred to as an organization and when we say this basically what we mean is that when we have an organization the organization can be disintegrated into different different business processes and these different business processes can have can be influenced by technology in two main ways 
the influence can be incremental or it can be transformational. If it is incremental, it means the steps that were traditionally manual are computerized or the whole process can be transformed and a new business model can even be introduced. Secondly, we try to look at how systems serve the different management groups in an organization. And we use a triangle to depict an organization where we indicated that at the very bottom, we have the operational level staff, the middle, we have the management staff, and the top, we have the, 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 the strategic managers. The strategic managers. So the information system that will save those at the very bottom, we refer to it as what? The transaction processing system. And the transaction processing system are usually routine in nature. Those who use the system do the same thing over and over and over again. So if you go into maybe a shop, say Malcolm, those are the tail. What basically they do is they are just processing orders. And every day when they come to the shop, that's basically what they are doing. The information system they are, in, they are using is the, what we refer to as a transaction processing system. They will not be able to tell you whether stock will be running out soon or not. So for instance, sometimes you go into a shop and you can't find a product. You come to the till and you ask those who serve uh, at the till and they tell you they have no idea whether it is finished or not. You will have to ask somebody else. The next person who will be able to tell you whether the stock will be back they will have stock in tomorrow or tomorrow next will be the middle level manager who relies on the information provided by the transaction processing system. That will be the middle level manager. And the middle level manager relies on what we refer to as the management information system or the decision support system. Then at the very top, those who make the strategic uh, decisions, they decide whether a particular branch should be uh, opened, a particular branch should be closed down, or a particular product line should be discontinued. They make the strategic decisions and they rely on the executive information system, the executive support systems. Then we also try to look at the systems for collaboration and social business, why and why they are they are important. And we looked at the collaborative technologies like email, uh, instant messengers, wikis, virtual worlds, and whatnot. Then finally, we try to understand the role of information systems function in business. And as indicated, point two point point two point four is much more related to two point one, where we try to explain by indicating that the role of information technology in organization can be seen in, from two perspectives. It can be incremental by gradually changing the steps, replacing manual steps with technology, or it can be what it can be transformational. So as always, I will end here. Make the video available and if you have any questions you can you can ask me. Thank you very much.